Novel. Goodbye, Mr. Chips by James Hilton. And the chapter is 18. So, let's start. When he awoke, for he seemed to have been asleep, he found himself in bed, and Maribali was there, stooping over him and smiling. Well, you old ruffian, feeling all right? That was a fine shock you gave us. Chips murmured, after a pause, and in a voice that surprised him by its weakness, Why, um, what, what has happened? Merely that you threw a faint. Mrs. Wicket came in and found you lucky she did. You're all right now. Take it easy. Sleep again if you feel inclined. He was glad someone had suggested such a good idea. He felt so weak that he wasn't even puzzled by the details of the business, how they had got him upstairs, what Mrs. Wicket had said, and so on. But then, suddenly, at the other side of the bed, he saw Mrs. Wicket. She was smiling. He thought, God bless my soul, what's she doing up here? And then, in the shadows behind Maribali, he saw Cartwright, the new head, he thought of him as new, even though he had been at Brookfield since 1919, and old Buffles, commonly called Roddy. Funny, the way they were all here. He felt, anyhow, I can't be bothered to wonder why about anything. I'm going to go to sleep. But it wasn't sleep, and it wasn't quite wakefulness, either, it was a sort of in-between state, full of dreams and faces and voices. Old scenes and old scraps of tunes, a Mozart trio that Kathy had once played in shares and laughter and the sound of guns, and, over it all, Brookfield bells, Brookfield bells. So you see, if Miss Plebs wanted Mr. Patrician to marry her, yes, you can, you liar. Joke. Need to be abhorred. Joke. That you, Max? Yes, come in. What's the news from the fatherland? Oh, mihi preteritos. Ralston said I was slack and inefficient, but they couldn't manage without me. Oh, no, biel heres ago, fortibus es in arrow. Can you translate that, any of you? It's a joke. Once he heard them talking about him in the room. Cartwright was whispering to Maravalli. Poor old chap, must have lived a lonely sort of life, all by himself. Maravalli answered, not always by himself. He married, you know. Oh, oh, did he? I never knew about that. She died. It must have been, oh, quite thirty years ago. More, possibly. Pity. Pity he never had any children. And at that, Chips opened his eyes as wide as he could and sought to attract their attention. It was hard for him to speak out loud, but he managed to murmur something, and they all looked round and came nearer to him. He struggled, slowly, with his words. What was that, um, you were saying about me just now? Old Buffles smiled and said, Nothing at all, old chap, nothing at all, we were just wondering when you were going to wake out of your beauty sleep. But, um, I heard you, you were talking about me. Absolutely nothing of any consequence, my dear fellow, really, I give you my word. I thought I heard you, one of you, saying it was a pity, umph, a pity, I never had any children, eh? But I have, you know. I have. The others smiled without answering, and after a pause chips began a faint and palpitating chuckle. Yes, umph, I have, he added, with quavering merriment. Thousands of M, thousands of M, and all boys. And then the chorus sang in his ears in final harmony, more grandly and sweetly than he had ever heard it before, and more comfortingly too. Pettifer, Pollitt, Porson, Potts, Pullman, Purvis, Pim Wilson, Radlett, Rapson, Reed, Reaper, Ready Primus, come round me now, all of you, 
for a last word and a joke. Harper, Haslett, Hatfield, Heatherly, my last joke, did you hear it? Did it make you laugh? Bowen, Boston, Bovey, Bradford, Bradley, Bramhall Anderson, wherever you are, whatever has happened, give me this moment with you, this last moment, my boys. And soon Chips was asleep. He seemed so peaceful that they did not disturb him to say good night, but in the morning, as the school bell sounded for breakfast, Brookfield had the news. Brookfield will never forget his lovableness, said Cartwright, in a speech to the school. Which was absurd, because all things are forgotten in the end. But Linford, at any rate, will remember and tell the tale, I said goodbye to Chips the night before he died. Hey guys, this the 18th chapter of the novel, Goodbye Mr. Chips. For more chapters, like, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel, CKEN 2.0. Share your opinion in the comments section and see you soon, bye, Allah Hafiz.